Okay, so the way I do this is I draw my line art. Here you can see I just have an inked panel. And rather than the traditional method of dropping in tones from my media folder or my, uh, my assets folder, I use Clip Studio Paint's half tone button to just color this the way I ordinarily would using grayscale and then click it over to a half tone pattern. So I'm gonna show you how that works here. First of all, we're going to make a new layer. Make sure your layer is a grayscale layer, not monochrome. I ink in monochrome, I do all my half toning in grayscale. Next, you're gonna to wanna to choose uh, a shade of gray that you like. I like to just pick a neutral kind of like uh, sort of less than 50% gray to start with, but it depends on you know how you want to, how dark you want your, your uh, image to be. So for example, let's say I wanted to shade this big piece of armor. I'm gonna use the uh, lasso fill brush and I'll just take a big piece of, do a big piece of it like this. Let me just say right now, if you're not using the lasso fill tool, start using it because the last thing you want is to be taking your lasso tool and going like this and clicking fill, it just takes forever. You want to use the lasso fill tool. If you don't have it, it's hidden under the shapes tool set and you can look at all your different tools. So you've got your straight line, curved lines, and then down here, you've got lasso fill. Why it's here and not in the fill section, I don't know. But here it is. If you don't have it here, I found it the hard way, you can add it by going to the tool section and say add from default. And it is really deeply hidden under the figure menu. Why? Again, I don't know, but here it is, lasso fill. And then you can just add it there. Now what I've done is I use it so often that I just took the lasso fill tool and I dragged it right out onto my dock here and made a shortcut to it. So I never have to go into that menu. So I have my, all my shapes here, but if I want to use lasso fill, which I usually do, I just do it right there. Then I'm just going to use the fill tool to make these big shapes. And maybe I want this section to be a bit darker. Just color this, just color this the way you'd color it if you were just going to do all this in a straight gray, gray scale coloring mode. You could also use a bucket fill for this if you want, but I, I tend to not do that. And I want her helmet to be dark, but not completely black. Here's what I want for helmet. So I'm gonna show you what I do frequently, which is using gradients for half toning. So I'll start with a dark gray and I'll just color in her helmet screen here, dark gray. And now I'll select that with the magic wand and I wanna add a gradient here. So I'm gonna go almost pure black, but not quite. Go to my gradient tool. In this case, I'm gonna do a foreground to transparent. I'm going to select a circular one and I'm gonna go like this until I'm happy with it. See, now her helmet goes from uh, very dark to slightly lighter gray. And you can do that anywhere. Let's say I want to highlight on her shoulder here. I'll select a lighter gray. And use a gradient. Maybe this time I'll use a straight line gradient. Just go like that. And I'll do the same thing up here. Just color it the same way you'd color anything if you weren't using half tones. Get all your values correct. And then you're going to go to your little tool section here. And this button up here changes it to half tone. Pretty easy, right? You can now change the frequency of it. You can make the dots bigger by reducing the frequency. You can make them very, very fine by increasing the frequency. I usually leave it at the default 60. Depends what I want the image to look like. You can change the dot settings from circles to lines, for example. Let's change that so you can see it clearly. Now it's lines. 
Uh, there are um, ellipses. There are diamonds. Anyway, you get the idea. I generally leave it on circle. And that is basically it. So um, this is my finished colored piece that I then click halftone on, and that's what we end up with. Now, one thing I would warn you against is using multiple layers of halftones. Like any layer I create here can be changed to a halftone layer. Again, you're going to want to make sure that it's grayscale. Um, I can change that to halftone. And so now anything I draw on this new halftone layer is going to be a halftone pattern. And I can adjust it separately to be whatever frequency I want. Now, Clip Studio does a really good job of canceling out the layers underneath it. But if you say change this to a multiply layer, so you can see under it, you can see like you're going to start getting some weird, what they call uh, moire patterns. See? And if you print this, it's going to end up looking really, really strange. So I would avoid using multiple halftone layers and just try to keep everything simple on one layer. I think that's about it. As you can see, it's fairly simple. It's literally a one button click and then you can adjust the settings. Also, if you do something you don't like, you can uh, just undo the halftone and you're back where you started. So that's it. Have fun. And uh, if you have any questions about this, let me know in the comments section.